Here's the second part of our screencast of digestive system and chemical reactions. Chemical reaction is a process that changes or transforms one set of chemicals into another by changing the chemical bonds. Mass and energy are conserved during chemical transformation, so that means that whatever is going into the reaction, mass-wise and energy-wise, it'll be the same coming out. The elements or compounds that enter into a chemical reaction, the ingredients, are known as the reactants. The things that are produced by a chemical reaction or come out of the chemical reaction are known as products. An important chemical reaction in your body is when carbon dioxide is removed. Carbon dioxide reacts with water to produce carbonic acid, which is highly soluble. This enables the blood to carry carbon dioxide to the lungs. The reaction is reversed in the lungs and produces carbon dioxide gas, which you breathe out. Energy is released or absorbed whenever chemical bonds are formed or broken during chemical reactions. Energy changes are one of the most important factors in determining whether a chemical reaction will occur. Chemical reactions that release energy will happen spontaneously or on their own. Chemical reactions that absorb energy won't occur without a source of energy. So some energy has to go in first. Every living thing has to have a source of energy to carry out the chemical reactions it needs. Plants get their energy from sunlight. Animals get their energy when they consume plants or other animals. Humans release the energy needed to do what we do through the chemical reactions that occur when we break down digested food or metabolize digested food. Chemical reactions that release energy do not always occur spontaneously. The energy that's needed to get those reactions going is called activation energy. What you see here is two different kind of graphs needed, showing the energy needed for the reaction to go forward. So the activation energy is the difference between the required energy and the energy of the reactants. So here's the activation energy in an energy absorbing reaction. So the products actually have more energy than the reactants. Here's the activation energy in an energy releasing reaction where the reactants have more energy than the products. Some chemical reactions are too slow or they have activation energies that are too high to make them easily available in living things. The way that these chemical reactions happen is by way of catalysts. It's a substance that speeds up the rate of chemical reaction, and the way they do that is they lower the reaction's activation energy. Enzymes are proteins that act as catalysts in living things, biological catalysts. They speed up chemical reactions that take place in cells. And they do this, again, by lowering the activation energies. So what you see here is a difference. We have the reaction pathway with the enzyme. The activation energy is here. The reaction pathway without the enzyme, the activation energy is here. It's much higher. The reaction that we were talking about at the beginning where carbon dioxide combine, combines with water is slow. If that's the case, carbon dioxide might build up and become toxic in the body. There's an enzyme in the blood called carbonic anhydrase that speeds up the reaction by 10 million times so that it takes place immediately and carbon dioxide is removed quickly. Enzymes are specific. They really usually only work on one chemical reaction. And the name of the enzyme is derived from what it does. So for instance, carbonic anhydrase 
is named because it catalyzes the reverse reaction that removes water from carbonic acid. So for a chemical reaction to happen, the reactants have to have enough energy to break bonds and make new bonds. If the reactants don't have enough energy, they will not change. Enzymes provide a site where the reactants can be brought together to react. The reactants of enzyme-catalyzed reactions are known as substrates. So substrates are what are getting changed. They're what are getting worked on. The enzyme carbonic anhydrase converts carbon dioxide and water into carbonic acid. The substrates bind to the enzyme in a place called the active site. They don't have the same shape, they have complementary shapes, so they fit together like a lock and a key. They're that specific, or like two puzzle pieces. There are different things that can affect the activity of enzymes, mainly temperature, pH, and regulatory mo molecules. Enzymes that are produced by human cells work best at temperatures close to 37 degrees Celsius. That's the normal temperature of the human body in Celsius. Enzymes also work best at certain pH values. Pepsin that's in the stomach works best in acid conditions. Most enzymes are regulated by molecules that carry chemical signals within cells, so switching enzymes on or off as needed. So when we're talking about pH, there's the pH scale that ranges from 0 to 14. At a pH of 7, the concentration of hydrogen and hydroxide ions is equal. Pure water is right there at a pH of 7. Solutions with a pH below 7 are called acidic because they have more hydrogen than hydroxide ions. The lower pH, the greater the acid. pH above 7 are called basic because they have more OH, or hydroxide ions, than hydrogen ions. The higher the pH, the more basic the solution. And then down here you see some examples of common household products that are acid and base. Each step on the pH scale is a factor of 10. So a liter of a solution with a pH of 4 has 10 times as many hydrogen ions as a liter of solution with a pH of 5. So it's way increasing strength, even if you're just going up by one number. As we said before, an acid is any compound that forms hydrogen ions in solution. Hydrochloric acid is an example, a strong acid that's produced by the stomach to help digest food. Bases produce hydroxide, or OH ions, in solution. Lye, it's called sodium hydroxide, or NaOH, that's used in soap making, is a strong base. These are pH values that are above 7. Back to homeostasis, stable internal environment. The pH of the fluids in most cells in the human body need to be kept between six and a half and seven and a half. If the pH is lower or higher, then those enzymes that are supposed to be building things up and breaking things down won't be able to work. Organisms control pH by the use of buffers. They're weak acids or bases that can react with strong acids or bases to prevent sudden changes in pH. Adding acid to an unbuffered solution causes the pH to drop. If a solution contains a buffer, adding the acid will only slightly change the pH.